Ladies and gentlemen, the following is scheduled for one fall. It is time for that way cool wrestling show! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Danny J here for That Way Cool Wrestling Show. Make sure you go down, hit the subscribe button down below to DJB Productions Network. Make sure you're hitting the notification bell as well for all the great stuff that's coming down the pike. And make sure you're sharing the channel as well. We greatly appreciate it. Leave your comments down below as well. We want to hear from you, the fans, and see what you guys have to say. And we want to relay your information right here on the show. As always, joined by my compadres, I got... Mad Mark Lindsay. Hey now. What's up, what's up, buddy? We have in the bar <laughs> the grand onslaught Jackson. What's up, people? How y'all doing? <laughs> and return guest, friend of the show, all around awesome guy, pro wrestling MMA announcer, extraordinaire. As soon as I can type this thing in there. There we go. Blake <laughs> Chadwick. There he goes. All right, all right. Great Blake, to be back here. Welcome on the show again. We always have fun with Blake's on the show. Um, as I go in here, my cursor is horrible. Here we go. So anyway, we bring Blake on, and I brought Blake on for a very specific reason. With it being Wrestle Week, you know, 2019, basically, uh, we're, we're going back in time, and we're getting a week's long worth of wrestling from all federations all over the world. Uh with everybody having a great grandstand, I would have to say, across the board. Um, Blake, what I wanted to do is bring you on a little bit. First, I want to, for those of you who don't know who Blake is, uh, well, you should. But if you don't, go back to our season, uh, probably season, this season, go back to like episode four or five, I think Blake's on. You can check out Blake there. We had a great interview with Blake. He was with Ring Warriors uh, originally. But Blake, you have an announcement that is on Facebook, but for the fans that haven't seen it, I want to give you the floor, and if you could, just let us know what you're doing now. Well, I'm very privileged to recently have come to terms with uh, Major League Wrestling, MLW, and I will be ring announcing their upcoming Fusion Television tapings at Guilt Nightclub in Orlando, Florida on Saturday afternoon, a special afternoon bell time on uh, November 9th, and certainly looking forward to uh, joining up with the MLW family. Uh, as we talked about before we went on the air, I do have something else big in the works with MLW. Unfortunately, since the I's have not been dotted and the T's have not been crossed yet, I can't exactly divulge that information, but it's bigger and better. So hopefully um, that will uh, lead to some more great things there as uh, MLW certainly taken off. I know you guys have talked about them in the past and certainly that almost ECW feel, that niche kind of product right now that's really taken off. And hopefully, as I said, it can open up some more doors. And, you know, you did mention Ring Warriors. Obviously, um, we had a great 14-episode run there on WGN America throughout the fall and winter of 2018. Uh, for various reasons, uh, we did not go directly back into production. But the Ring Warriors brand is not dead yet, as there is potentially something on the horizon that I, I hate to use the term, but again... We talked about them before the show, so I might as well throw a little Shivani-ism in there. It's going to be very <laughs> earth-shattering, almost the biggest announcement in the history of our sport, if you will. For for Ring Warriors? For Ring Warriors. I mean, for Ring Warriors, oh, okay. okay. I, I am exaggerating. Hey, you never know. Biggest announcement in the history You're of the very sport. good at what you do, because I was hung on this whole thing. I was like, really? What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge announcement, uh, something that, you know, when I know, most likely everyone else will know, and yeah. it will be something that could open up the door for not just Ring Warriors, but a lot of independent organizations ready to take their product to the next level. It could really be game-changing. So keep your eyes out on that. It would probably be early 2020 if it does come to fruition. And if it doesn't, I'll tell you off air. <laughs> and, and, and that's exactly what we're doing. Now, you know what? That means I'm getting back in the ring now, baby. Yeah. <laughs> we all have a chance. <laughs> now, with everything going on. Let me put this away so people don't think we're going to problem. Yeah, we're going to talk. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to you and, and our sponsor later. But now we uh, – <laughs> and your sponsor. No, but uh, we, uh, we wanted to talk about wrestling. There's so much going on. I mean, wrestling now can officially be said it's in an upswing. I think sure. we all could say that. Um, especially coming from the low swing that it was in for a number of years. 
Um, working actively in the business right now, Blake, is there rumbles about all the different federations? Is everybody trying to scatter to say, hey, I got to get something over to AEW. I got to get something to NWA because their their show, their opening debut of the studio show was phenomenal. I don't know if you saw it or not, but it was great. I'm getting ready to watch it later on after this broadcast to watch the, the episode two. So are there rumblings or for guys like yourself to say, hey, I need to get involved in this? Well, that's why I was five minutes late. I had to finish the episode. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, but, <laughs> and, and, and NWA Power, it, it's great. Uh, one of my best friends, uh, full disclosure, one half the NWA World Tag Team Champions, Royce Isaacs. Very happy yeah. to see him in the national spotlight yet again. And it, it's a great opportunity. I mean, you look at a guy like his tag team partner, Tom Latimer, formerly known yeah. as Graham. You look at some of these other guys, Mr. Anderson, Aaron um, Stevens, formerly known as Damian Sandow. Some of these mm -hmm. guys getting a new lease on life here and getting to do it in that studio environment. You guys, especially myself on the back end of it, grew up with studio wrestling and got that feel, whether it's the Mid-Atlantic, you know, uh, Jim Crockett promotions, all those different uh, situations. And, you know, studio wrestling certainly does have a place today. And, and you know, Danny, as you were talking about, a lot of guys now, they want to be able to attach themselves to one place. They want to find that home and become part of, you know, whatever family that might be. And now, you know, everyone grabbing for the proverbial contract, wherever that contract will come from. And there's a lot of options now. I mean, throughout, you got WWE and in within WWE, NXT, Raw, SmackDown. Of course, you have the UK brand as well. Of course, obviously, you know, you've got AEW now emerging. Ring of Honor still there. Impact Wrestling still there. Uh, NWA in the mix. MLW in the mix. New Japan Pro Wrestling. And, of course, you know, you go down south to Mexico, AAA, the crash, CMLL. Uh, the UK still buzzing despite the WWE gutting a good portion of their independent scene. So you hit it right on the head. I mean, wrestling right now is at a very big high. And as someone who started in 2004, I started right in the middle of that lull. And it was very difficult to really break out of your local promotions at that point. Guys weren't really being brought into other territories. It, it was very much a, a scratching, clawing type of environment to even get an opportunity. Now there's plenty of opportunities out there. And if you have anything to bring to the table in one aspect of the game or multiple aspects of the game, you should find a way to at least get a chance somewhere in 2019. I mean, I find it very interesting that like everybody picked October of 19 to break out and everything. It seems like it was the month to do it. Uh, Impact Wrestling coming off the fishing channel or whatever the frick they were on at that point for, that, for the X amount of year or whatever it was, you know. <laughs> Why do you got to mess with them like that, man? Dude, I'd stop it. You know, your show got canceled from there, and they're on there now. And now they're, <laughs> now they're on Axis, which is a great channel. Um, they've been showing the pay-per-views from this year, which have been cool. good. They were at the Asylum. Uh, they were at a couple other uh, venues that were like, <laughs> nostalgic to TNA. So that was kind of cool. Are people looking at Impact again? Because I'm sure in the business it was like, to stay away from it, it's a sinking ship. <laughs> well, it, it's funny that it, it's funny that you know how different the perspective really can be, whether you're in the business or you know on the fringe of the business or just a casual viewer. It, it's a great opportunity if you're in the business. I mean, it's one of those things. I, I was in talks with Impact actually about ring announcing Bound for Glory, and the fact that it's you know this weekend. And I haven't said anything. Pretty much shows you that I'm not doing it, so I have no problem discussing it right now. <laughs> right. You know, Impact was a place that, right. you know, for a long time I definitely wanted to be. I mean, they were on national television, and for years, big names: Hogan, Sting, Flair. I mean, you had all these guys coming through. Jeff Jarrett, of course, at the helm. Uh -oh. Big time guys yeah. there uh, well, for Impact Wrestling, right. um, and it's one of those situations where. You know, from the outside looking in, it might not be as glamorous as it was perhaps, you know, a decade ago, but there there is consistent work there. Um, the benefits for the various competitors are increasing. I mean, I have a little bit of intimate knowledge of what goes on with Impact Wrestling based on uh, some friendships that I have. So it's something where, you know, the, the boys, if you will, are getting taken care of a little bit better than they were in the past. And, you know, as you said, I mean, they're essentially coming out of obscurity. They're going on to Axis. Me personally... My cable provider does not have access. 
But yeah. again, a lot do, and it really increases your exposure. And now, you know, a little bit of synergy perhaps with WOW and New Japan Pro Wrestling. And the impact has been, you know, given a new lease on life. And, you know, they have some a breath of fresh air infused into them. They've got a lot of great young talent guys that were big time on the independent scene for the last handful of years, now getting a shot on the mainstream. Um, you know, it's one of those things where as much as we look at this, overabundance of wrestling there's this oversaturation if you will of the market there are going to be some dominoes that fall impact wrestling of course has fallen down a little bit i mean years ago they were in the position essentially aew's in right now they were that number two and to me the one that took the biggest hit unfortunately and it was directly due to aew beginning when you lose cody rhodes when you lose adam page when you lose the young bucks you lose Kazarian, you lose Daniels, you lose Scorpio Sky. That's seven big time names just out of the gate. Ring of Honor has had a very difficult time rebuilding. They've been trying to rebuild for the bulk of 2019. They've had some hits and misses, but that's right there a direct casualty of this big boom of professional wrestling. So as great as it is that there is a boom, there are still some negatives. Some companies aren't in the same light as they once were, but for all the boys and girls out there, it's pretty much any opportunity they can to, you know, increase their exposure and get their name out there. They see it as a positive. Now, hey, Blake, a question for you real quick. My question is, as you mentioned with Ring of Honor and, um, you know, being a casualty of this war, do you think it would be behoove them to maybe reach out to AEW and offer it to be something of like a feeding system like NXT was for a long time? Because they had TV. They can still do their own product but then maybe just, you know, supply the new talent for the bigger promotions. I think you're on the right track. I think that's an excellent idea. And I, I do believe Ring of Honor, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I think they might be working towards some sort of um, sharing relationship, some sort of working relationship with Impact Wrestling. And to me, just looking at the landscape, if Impact and Ring of Honor were to combine, that would probably be the best for everyone, I think, at this point. Just looking at the market, I think there is certainly a fan base that would go to that product, but to divide that into two might not be the smartest thing right now. Rumors have it, and it did happen. And granted, rumors are rumors, but that Anthem Sports was actually in talks to purchase ROH. Now, if that was the case, there your feed, there's your feeder system in, a, in an NXT WWE format. Like we like we see with the WWE now, um, Anthem Sports really defied a lot of negative negativity. They defied a lot of stuff going in and doing the drastic changes that they made when they first came in. And look now, about three four years later, now they're in a position to buy ROH, which by far was a better Fed back in the day. Sure, if you think about it, you know. Um, on your end, I mean, obviously ROH was the place to go. I'm assuming now it's like, well, I don't know if I would go there. Is it like what impact wrestling was getting during the Carter administration? I think it kind of depends where you're at in your career. Um, you know, if you're looking for maybe another opportunity, the proverbial, you know, one more run, one more payday, maybe that's not a bad move. If you're an independent guy and you're looking to get a little bit more exposure and possibly, you know, break out a little bit, then get picked up by a bigger company like an NXT or an AEW or something like that. I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, there's guys that are in Ring of Honor currently that probably feel a little bit stuck that probably, you know, initially came on or, you know, re-signed a deal. I mean, essentially, the number one guy has to be probably Marty Skrull. I mean, you look at him right now, and his contract is about to be up. But, you know, Skrull's a guy that, you know, all his friends go. They start their own promotion. He does get elevated, but he kind of is lost in purgatory a little bit. Even though he's still one of the top in the world, still a phenomenal talent, I, it's very difficult to argue that Marty Skrull hasn't lost some of the steam that he had, you know, as they go back to All In, you know, back in uh, the fall right. of 2018. So I, I do think you see some situations where it's, it's good for some, maybe not good for others, but – Overall, I mean, if you're on TV, you're under contract, you know, it's it could be a lot worse. And again, you go back to the landscape of the business 10, 15 years ago, that wasn't really an option. True. Now, if you look at the ROH roster that went through, you got guys like Michael Elgin, who appeared in Impact. Now, granted, it was on the fishing channel, so I didn't get the chance to see him wrestle anything. 
You know. Why you hating on the fishing channel? Shut <laughs> up. Just stop. Just stop. It was Bassmasters and Michael Elgin. That's what ended up happening. Does Legrand have some stock in the fishing channel? <laughs> I know, right? It's, that's what I'm saying. No. Yeah. I'm a sportsman. Yeah, Look, yeah. I, got, I got my buddy hanging on the wall. Well, Godzilla's in front of him, but still. <laughs> <laughs> but you got those guys. You got... Um, uh, I forget their names. Mark, they're in NXT now. I think they might be the Vikings or whatever. Uh, they were in R.A. Spoiler alert. Ivan and, uh, Eric and Ivar or whatever, yeah. Yeah, but in R.A., yeah, right? They were like the top. They, they won the Royal Tag Team last night. They didn't win the steal on top. Yeah. I don't watch they're sports the new entertainment. Tag team champs. How do you yeah. not? I was was a, I, that's why I came to mind. The brand new tag team champions there. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you know. And they I, did it in a, I, a convincing fashion, and it was a beautiful yep. thing to watch. Yep. I saw it on Facebook, and I thought it was uh, the Brothers of Destruction, whatever those guys, the, the Brogan brother, whatever they did, or Eric Roy and the other guy, right? That's what I thought it was. And then I was like, oh, no, it's the Vikings. So I'm like, okay. So it's these guys. I said, but weren't like, they in ROH as, like, the top – this is our fearless leader. I don't watch sports entertainment. I watch wrestling. Wrestling, wrestling. And we're supposed to value his opinion when he doesn't know that the Viking Raiders won the World Cup. I watch wrestling, not sports entertainment. I want to say this directly oh. to my microphone, okay? No, Look, but, but sports entertainment or not, you got – we. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We got – oh, man. Yeah. Look. The Viking Raiders have been doing their thing for a while now. Yes. When they were in NXT, now they're on the main show. Yes. And they proved it last night when they won the titles. And they did it in a way that was convincing. And they showed a lot of that athleticism. And the I give thing, them a lot of credit. The only thing Being good a about bigger it, guy, I give them a lot of credit for what they did. The only thing good about it is that they're an actual tag team. And it's not this, let's throw two single guys together who are going to fight later on this month and make them the tag team champions, which is a classic WWE move. Blake, you want to say something? I know. Yeah, I, I think you see a situation <laughs> where for a couple of months, WWE obviously knew they were moving to Fox. They knew they were going to have the draft. They knew they were going to split the rosters and kind of reset things. So they kind of had to tread water to get to that point. And I feel like that's exactly what you saw. They didn't know exactly what direction they wanted to go. But a right. refreshing thing has to be, Last night, you see a legitimate tag team, a badass group of guys come in there, convincingly win the titles, as you mentioned. And now they have direction. And to me, that's the path they're going to go. So now we got a brand split. you got a team at the top of the Raw tag team division. And I hope, you know, for the next handful of months, they're able to kind of establish that, whether it's, it's matches with Gallows and Anderson or whoever it be, at least kind of get some sort of – Continuity in the tag team division. No, he doesn't get the shine as much, and I really wish they did over there. Uh, and I forget their names. That's how bad they don't get the shine. They're in NXT. They're they're like the they're they got like the roadblock stuff. But Mark, help me out. They're the two big guys. Heavy machinery. Heavy machinery. Yes. Thank you. Those guys are great to watch. They're well, a they're tag team. What's that? They're entertaining. They're very entertaining to watch. And I love seeing a guy, guys that can perform like that. Now, let's switch it over to AEW in a second. And you have guys like that who now are, and granted, we don't know what's happening behind scenes, but are being promised you're going to be able to build your own brand. You're going to be able to do your own thing. In essence, everything I've said on the show for many years that we're not going to see a Roddy Piper anymore. We're not going to see a Hulk Hogan anymore because these guys that are out there are very scripted, heavily scripted. Hopefully AEW is going to keep to this statement to say, we want you to build your own thing, be somebody you can be. And, 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 and like, for example, I'm real big Dan, on Adam page right now. Dan, Adam I, have three letters for you. I have three letters for you, Dan MJF. Okay. That did the, the wow. dude is probably one of the most entertaining things. Yeah. At this business right now, um, and when he does his press releases, he yeah, he, oh, I he love him. Away from the interviewers, he trolls people on Twitter. Oh, you, you watch and you watch MLW. You know he's got Rich Holiday with him, who's another great talent. Rich Holiday, I I really want to see him jump up further. Uh, your buddy Alex Hammerstone, oh, man, Hammerstone, Hammerstone, man, he's great. I, I he really I love his new look. We made fun of I and I do apologize. Because we made fun of him the last time we talked. 
uh, cause he was little age, <laughs> but, but, but he, but he, he cut his hair. He redid his gimmick. It's an awesome gimmick. He looks great. And as the dynasty, they really are a projected, uh, faction uh, that I can believe in. They're feuding with a the heart. A faction and, and a force to be reckoned with. Right. right. And, and, and I didn't get a chance to say this on the show. And I want, I want Blake to chime in on this. The, the, in, this new insurgence in six man tags. It's we're going back to free bird style, which is kind of neat too. I think people are uh, trying to uh, exit the four horsemen, you know, persona with any, any faction that gets together. And we're going with this free bird style. And uh, what is your, your take on that? Cause I mean, there's so many different six man tags now and they're really, really impressive. Sure, and a lot of them have credibility, and of course, you could start right at the top with the New Day, obviously, yeah. over the last five or six years, really establishing themselves as the premier trios team. Uh, I think you can really look at the expansion of just the international flavor of professional wrestling and look at the influence of Lucha Libre. Lucha Libre, obviously, yeah. very much based in the trios tags, the six-man, the three-on-three, three. and though a lot of these companies don't necessarily use Lucha Libre rules, I think you're seeing that influence of that Mexican international talent really coming to fruition in America. And that's why you're seeing so many trios and so many groups like that and six man tags. I think it's great. Uh, personally, I, I think it's unnecessary to necessarily go the route of a six man tag team championship. Just because to me, unless you're looking at six plus teams in the division, not really worth going for tag right. team titles. But you right. can build exactly. some legitimate feuds there. I mean, you mentioned the Hart Foundation, the Dynasty, certainly probably the premier feud in terms of groups with MLW. Mm -hmm. You got the country unit there as well. So, I mean, you're looking at a lot of these groups there, and you can almost, and, and to me, growing up, one of the big things with factions, you can almost visualize the payoffs, the big blow yeah. matches and stuff. And now with these trios, you can kind of fantasy book a little, say, hey, this group's going to go with this group, and, you know, then you can end up seeing it come to fruition. We're seeing a lot of international wrestling coming to America. Between Japan, you have NOAA, you have New Japan, uh, and other smaller factions. There was the A1 faction, which was, I think, Great Muda's faction. Zero. Uh, zero one. Thank you. And then, um, and then with AAA uh, and CMLL and an, a number and the Crash promotion, right? The uh, you're getting all these luchadors. Do you think that that six man tag faction insurgents is just based on the fact that hey, we're bringing in a lot of lucha libre guys, and we want to make their fans may be familiar with our product in a sense. I, I think you definitely hit it on the head and that has to be a huge influence just because if you look at the last couple of years, whether it's with Lucha underground, and then you see that expand further with the Lucha brothers, Pentagon junior Phoenix, and even guys like El Hijo de Fantasma. I mean, he just signed with WWE. I mean, he's Humberto Carrillo, Hector Garza. I mean, you see a lot of these guys come in and I, I think it has to do with that big influence and you can definitely see that crossing over as wrestling, you know, is becoming more and more global. It's really a lot to watch. I mean, Mark, you've been watching, uh, did you watch NXT this week, Mark? I watched uh, the highlights of it. Yeah. I mean, I, fast yeah, I didn't get to watch it. Yeah. What I like to do now is I like to watch the, I fast forward through the commercials and just watch what I want to watch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we kind of, and we were saying this before that like with so much, to get through, it's like you kind of have to micromanage this well, episode and get through what you want. It's a truth. Raw has gotten yeah. much better in this the last few weeks. Um, you know, a lot of people can say that it has to do with Paul Heyman and his role, but it's still a chore to go through three hours of TV. Uh, I won't start watching Raw till ten o'clock at night, and yeah. I'll fast forward through. And then by the time I, I watch everything I want to see, I, I'm I'm live at about ten forty. <laughs> and I watched it, and, and, and that's just the, you know, but I, I think Blake had a great point earlier that they were just trying to get through the whole season mm -hmm. premiere of Fox, the whole draft, and, and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what the product has to offer, and I'm kind of confused, uh, as we talked about earlier before Blake joined us, is Eric Bischoff's out, <laughs> you know? and um, yeah, yeah, you bring up something I was just about you know, to bring up, which is yeah. Eric Bischoff is out. Bruce Pritchard's back in. Um, I think I mentioned on a post with, uh, we were talking, I was talking with the McIntyre brothers who've been on the show a lot uh, and saying that I think 
I think it, what I would assume, based on what I would know, is that Bruce Pritchard's much more of a company man and probably has a better relationship, working relationship, with World Wrestling Entertainment than Eric Bischoff does. Yeah, but don't you think that's a bridge that was burned? I mean, Eric Bischoff brought his family from South Dakota over to Connecticut to live there. And I think they care. Do you think that was a bridge burned? Do you think they care? <laughs> I, I mean, that, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, you know, I'm not a WWE fan, but really, do you think they care? I don't think they do. Bischoff is money. I don't care if you like him or don't like him. He is money printed on paper. He really is. But. He's also that A, that A type. He's not someone that's going to fall in line. He's not someone that can really work for somebody else. He has to work for himself. And I think that's something that's going to be a detriment to him working with the World Wrestling Entertainment. Bruce Pritchard's like, I'm yours. Let me do whatever you want. I'm fine. Bruce Pritchard's always known to be a good company man. Bruce Pritchard loves you. Loves you. You know. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, yeah, please, Blake. Please, Blake. Uh, I mean, the craziest part to me is not only does he get replaced, he's not even with the company anymore. They release No, him. that's what I'm saying. Right, exactly. So, so, I mean, you're talking, you talked about him moving his family. Within three months, the whole thing blows up. <laughs> I'd imagine at some point, whether it's, you know, in, in a week, in a month, six months, whatever it is, we'll end up hearing what went down, whether it's on 83 weeks or through some other medium. But I'd imagine something happened of some sort of significance because this just seems so abrupt and, and so so final. So I, I don't know what it could be, but clearly Bischoff and, and McMahon, just like the late 90s, didn't mix. How something fast, didn't work. How fast before he shows up in AEW? Tomorrow night. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm saying I know, right? He's flying the thing right now. I'm in Italy. I'll be there. We will see Eric Bischoff tomorrow night. He's like, I'm an would, hour flight away. <laughs> I would temper my expectations a little bit for a couple of reasons. One, yeah. I don't know what sort of non-compete he has. Right. So right. I would imagine there's some sort of clause there. Yeah. And then again, just based on you know intuition and interviews and things I've seen, I don't really get the vibe that Cody Rhodes is a big uh, Eric Bischoff mark. You know, I don't I don't think he's necessarily, hey, we need this guy to come over to AEW. If he ended up going, would I be totally shocked? Absolutely not. I just don't think it's as much of a you know a sure thing as perhaps you know the proverbial going to WCW. And let's say this too: Eric Bischoff didn't exactly leave Turner Broadcasting with a fresh taste in their mouth. Very true. Let's go back to WCW for a second. He had a lot of bad meetings. <laughs> with with Ted himself and sure. with 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 Time Warner and stuff like that. So practices. Yeah, I mean, like I think he should just go to ROH. <laughs> just help them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like let 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 the that broadcasting system deal with him. You know, but no, Eric Bischoff. It's it's the same because he's such money. But here's the other thing though too. He falls into a rut like some of them do where it's the same creative over and over again. It's big, but it's the same. What he did for WCW should not be duplicated, but it would be attempted to be in WWE. And what he does in WWE, and he was there, and he did a lot in WWE, what he, what he did there would be attempted to be somewhere else. I don't want to see Hogan tripping himself down to the ring. I don't want to see that. It was sad, very sad to see Arn Anderson with the gigantic triple A that he has on his stomach, you know, trying to come down and, and, and mess with, with uh, Cody's match uh, that I was feeling bad for Tully. Cause I said, Tully looks like the crypt keeper. Like I, I don't understand. He's Dude, he, he, he still throws one hell of a spine buster though. Yep, yes, he does. yes, he does. And he did Best it well. Spine buster in the business, baby. And I said, then it was funny. Cause I saw a picture of them. They were just at a con, I think like two weeks ago. And they got a picture of him. I said, Jesus Christ, they look like great grandparents. I said, this is the guys that I grew up with. That I'm like, this is the most respected tag team in the business. And now they look like they need canes and larks. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, this is so sad. Dude, but, that's so disrespectful, man. I know. I'm but I'm, I'm, I'm ahead here, you know. I'm observing. Jeez. Know, whatever. This show's been on for four years. They're not watching it. <laughs> I ain't worried about that. They're not watching my show. 
Well, you know what? I mean, it's, there's so much exciting stuff, and and like you said, you're going to MLW. I watched. I didn't get a chance to watch this week's episode, but like I watch that every week. Uh, we lost BN Sports up here on Comcast. So did we. Yeah. yeah. So they had a lot of major uh, contractual uh, disagreements, and it's like nobody was watching the channel because it was all soccer up until wrestling got on air, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, we can make some money," and everybody's like, "No, I don't want to pay you." You know what I mean? So now I watch it on YouTube, but it's a great hour of wrestling. It really, truly is. And there was actually an article that came out that said, hey, don't overlook these guys because there's another player that's just not being talked about. And it is MLW. And you, yeah. sir, are in a very good position. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very much relishing the opportunity. I, I look forward to it. And it's something that, you know, I plan on, you know, absolutely attacking and owning and I realize the eyes will be on it as, you know, as you said, there's room in the market for it. And it appears as if it is emerging as a legitimate player. It's not on the same level as WWE. It's not on no. the same level as AEW. But again, neither was ECW. And we're still talking about that over 20 years later. So it's one yeah. of those things where, you know, the MLW's got to has a role. I mean, I remember right before I broke into professional wrestling when I was still, you know, just in my fan days and, MLW was a thing. It was a budding thing, especially down here in Florida. Uh, before I moved down here, I had heard about it. It was kind of the you know next generation of ECW. And then for various reasons, they they kind of closed up shop. Um, you know, earlier on, a couple of years after that. But you know, they they reemerged back in 2017. And MLW looks to be you know continuing to grow. They're running multiple cities. They're running multiple countries. And it looks like the thing where you know it might not be a bad time to hop on that bandwagon. And you know what, too? They're, they're, they're having their first pay-per-view. Uh, was it next month? This month? Next uh, month. It's actually November 2nd. November 2nd, right? Yes. Uh, which looks to be a really good card. You said the word attack. I believe that you're going to be joining Contra. Well, I actually was just, <laughs> I was actually just with Jacob Fatu on Sunday. He is phenomenal. If, and I'll, I'll tell you what. Oh, my God. He is, he, he, you want to talk about printing money? That yeah. guy can print some money. Yes, me, he can. If you, if wrestling fans, if you have not gotten a chance to, I'm sure there's clips you can find on YouTube. You can actually go on MLW's YouTube page. They have every episode listed. Watch them. I'm telling you, watch them, watch them. Jacob Fatu is unbelievable. The what, what this man can do for his size. Now, granted, he is a Samoan, so they all end up being gold. But like. What are you making faces for? I just paid them a compliment. I, 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 and I worked with Offense Seeker, so they're, they're nice people. Shut up. If, 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 I wanted to give fan, <laughs> if I wanted to give WWE fans, those who are unfamiliar with MLW, a comparison, he's yeah. essentially Umaga. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. he is. He's a smaller Umaga. He really, really is. Um, he's uh, – which one's son? He's um, – The Samoan Savage. Yes, 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 yes. Because then, what's the name was there too? Uh, Lance. Uh, Lance was there, and he's uh, Samu's. Yes, Lance Hawaii. Um, he's he's yeah. Samu's son. Right. And uh, and, and blessings to him. Uh, Samu is doing well again. So very good blessings Absolutely. to him. I work. I had the pleasure of working with him in '99. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. They. It was my. It was. I was. Early in my career, as I remember we were talking about this off the air where I was a ring announcer, I was ring cameraman and stuff like that. And we did a cage yeah. match where XWF was invading the LIWF. And it was the Samoans versus whoever they grabbed, right? And they decided last minute to put me inside the cage because they never had a cameraman in the wrestling ring before. Wow. So Samu was my guide. And he would be punching somebody and he'd be like, right. And I'd step to the right, and he'd throw somebody to my left. And he'd be like, left. And I'd do this. And he was like, jump. And he would go sliding underneath me. And then he beat the crap out of somebody. And this guy, uh, Derek Domino, who in Philadelphia, if you know indie wrestling, Derek Domino, probably one of the best bleeders in the business. Okay? He's bleeding like a stuck pig. I have a white uniform shirt on. He's full, <laughs> full of blood. Samu grabs me. And by my neck, it says tape him. I'm like, all right, I, you know, I gimmick. And I'm like, okay, okay. And the, the amount of blood that was on my white t shirt, I said, Jesus Christ. 
I said, I this is great, but I don't know where this guy's been. I don't know. What on you know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is kind of sick, you know. But what a great experience. And then when I got out, they said, Oh my God, because the whole time he was like, dude, you're gonna die in that ring. You're not trained, you're gonna absolutely die in this ring. And I'm like, Oh, I'll be fine. Joke, joke, joke. And then like LA Smooth, who's his uh, yeah. is there. He goes, dude, what the hell are you doing in the ring? I said, they, they're going to put me there. He goes, dude, you're going to die in this ring. They all had the same <laughs> statement. Everyone, they weren't talking to each other, but they all said the same thing to me. And I said, this is, the, I, I love this. <laughs> so, awesome. the world. Great. so but, Dan, I don't mean to cut you off. Yes, do But it. I know Blake oh, no. has to go. Is there any final thoughts or yes. anything you want to plug before you go? That Because we know you're busy and you have another promotion. Well, yeah, yeah, I'd love to stick around a little longer. I actually got a call this afternoon to do something with celebrity boxing down here. I don't know if you guys are familiar with celebrity boxing. Law. And um, they're doing a little uh, press conference here in a little bit um, down to uh, down in Fort Lauderdale. And supposedly there's going to be a lot of eyes on it. Could be like a TMZ sort of thing. So look out for me maybe later on there today or tomorrow. And um Looks to be uh, maybe a relationship that I'm going to be cultivating, whether it's uh, ring announcing. I think I might be helping do some matchmaking as well. So uh, we'll see how that all plays out. But, you know, hey, celebrity boxing could be a lot worse, right? <laughs> so, so not only is Blake Chadwick a great friend of the show, we love him to death, but Blake's dad is a friend of the show and we love him to death. Blake, I want you to plug your dad because your dad's got a side business and I just uh, and, and he's just a cool guy. And I want him to get some just desserts as well, please. Well, I appreciate that. My dad, um, he invented a waterless car care product. Um, it was called Chadwick's Triple Play. Uh, it's called Chadwick's Extreme. And this is uh, under Chadwick's uh, Cosmetic Car Care. And you can look for that the website, chadwickscosmeticcarcare.com. And also, uh, you can search it on Facebook. Uh, you can still search Chadwick's Triple Play. It'll all pop up there right for you. And it's great. It's very innovative. He sells it all over the world. This new formula is even better than the one before. It's getting rave reviews. It just recently got released to the public. Uh, he's had some private people testing it out, and they're, they're all loving it to death. And now it's for uh, available for purchase on the website. So looking at some big things coming up there for that. And hopefully he can really uh, hit another home run as it relates to the car care businesses. He's been in the car business for over 50 years. My dad is 65 years old. He started about 14, 15 years old and has been, you know, plugging away ever since. And he's, uh, and you know what? He looks about five years older than me. Yeah. God bless him. You yeah. guys have good genetics, man. Cause yeah, I, I see pictures saying, of Blake sure. and his dad together and they're like two models. These kids they are crazy. It's like, I'm like, Jesus. We've, been, uh, we've been called brothers many times. Yeah. I can um, see that. He looks like the older brother. He's just a little silver, yes. you know, it, it, Indeed, indeed, indeed. So uh, he, he's doing great with that. So certainly uh, wish wish him the best uh, with his new product and everything. And of course, if you all want to check it out, I know you guys uh, aren't in the best weather environment for cars, but hey, you got no. a few times a year, you might be able to uh, to break it all Once out there twice. and uh, get it going. So. Well, we send send that way cool wrestling his show love to your dad. Tell well, him we love him with that. I told him he was going to be on today. He's, he said he can't wait to listen. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be airing tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have that on tomorrow. I'll be, I'll share it to your page and his page and stuff like that. Um, also we're, we're in the, pro I'm trying to get these guys together so we can come down to Florida and we got, we're going to, we're going to kidnap you and then we're going to get a couple other people and we're going to go drinking. That, that, that sounds like a great That's what we're doing. Me. That's what we're doing. I've been talking to Haku. I've been talking to Ricky Santana and they're like, just let us know. they said, brother, just let us know when you're coming down and we'll go out. So I, I, you know, Haku, Blake Chadwick, Ricky Santana, that way cool wrestling show. It's going to be a problem, but we're going to go. And, I'm and telling if you. we need to buy a car, we're with the right people. You, <laughs> that's right. And Haku is in the complaints department, so I don't have any problems at all. That's the thing. How you know, fitting he, is that, right? You know, he, he's phenomenal. It's great. Blake, like that's I said, so I'll much. buy the first 200 wings. There you go. <laughs> we'll, there you we'll, go. we'll have to get you guys, we'll, we'll have to coordinate a date where maybe 
you guys come down and we're also doing one of Gangrel's shows down here. Oh, that's right. You're very good friends with him too, right? He very does a lot of promoting on Earth. I do his ring announcing. I do his commentary. We just had a great cancer benefit at the casino at Dana Beach this past Sunday. Oh, over awesome. 600 over 600 people in the house. Medusa was there. Uh, one of our regulars now is actually, uh, she goes by Celeste now, but of course, Caitlin, former WWE yes. champion. She yeah. uh, lives down here. So she's been competing regularly um, for Gangrel and got a great group of students, some guys that certainly in the next couple of years will be signing a contract somewhere. And just, it's a great environment. And especially the casino shows, just a great venue. And, and you guys have a blast. Great people for you to interview. It, it would be a win for everyone. It's going to be awesome. And it's going to be sunny, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> in, in Florida, if it's not sunny now, give it 20 minutes. <laughs> That's a trick. That's a trick. Blake, we love you to death, buddy. You're awesome. Best of luck in MLW. Best Thank of you so luck. much. Congratulations, uh, man. Congratulations on everything you got going on. Third, I'm Thank telling you. I really appreciate that. I, I love being here on the show. Uh, you guys are awesome. I love talking to you. And listen, love to come back. Love to take some more time. And as this uh, war, if you will, gets a little bit more in depth, would love to talk some more AEW, some NXT, Fantastic. W, whatever you guys want to talk about. Listen, Regardless if I'm in the business or not, for over 30 years, I've been a fan. And I love wrestling more than just about anything. So anytime I can talk about it with three guys as knowledgeable as you, it's my pleasure. I really appreciate that. I really do. Absolutely. And our pastor, Rich Bocchini, too. I think he's awesome. Uh, listen, I, uh, I want to see the two of you together. Rich Bocchini and Blake Sadwick. Years, I've, never, I've never actually met Rich. And for years, it was, it's almost that internal friendly rivalry. But I'd imagine that yeah. uh, you know, I, when I meet him, we'll, we'll, we'll hit it off. He's the indie hot guy. I'm telling you. Because Mauro Ranallo, I think, as of today, is the guy to look at. Mauro's you know, great. He, I mean, I love – I'm a Shivani guy, all right? Sure. So forget the old guys for a second. Mauro Ranallo is your guy. But Rich Bocchini is very impressive. And he runs that show because when Shivani came back, I don't think Shivani was, was even barely calling it in. He was leaving no, he, a voicemail. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He, he definitely uh, was – uh, shaking off the proverbial rust, and Rich definitely held his own. And then he goes to AEW, and he sounds like it's Nitro 1996. <laughs> like, 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 where'd you pull that out of, Tony? It's funny, funny how stuff. that happens, right? <laughs> but thank you so much. You got to run. I know you're, 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 it's not far from you, but you do have to run. Thank you I for do. coming on the show. Thank you, thank you so very much. Definitely. LeGrand Jackson, thank you. Mark Lindsay, thank you. Chuck Gregory, he's on assignment. And he's getting skinny, so we're going to talk to him when he comes back on as well. For Blake, for Graham, for Mark, my name is Danny J. Until next time, gang, we'll see you at the matches. Goodbye, everybody. The proceeding was produced by DJB Productions. Go to www.thatworkcoolwrestlingshow.com.